Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Megan. I've been in the e-commerce space for going on four years now. I quickly scaled my business to six figures and now I'm sharing everything that I've learned along the way with you guys on my channel here. I upload videos every single week, so if you want to continue to learn from me, and my mistakes. Please subscribe so you don't miss a video from me and it would mean so so much to me as I'm really trying to grow my channel right now. So today I'm going to be walking you through the Amazon Payments dashboard. We'll touch on how to read the dashboard, how much you should expect to get paid, when you will get paid, and a few other tips and tricks. But let's waste no more time and let's get into it. How do I access the Payments dashboard? Open up the Amazon menu, go down to Reports, and click payments. What am I getting paid and when? So the net proceeds is what you will get paid. You can find this number at the top or the bottom of the page. However, the settlement period is still open so this amount will continue to fluctuate as you continue to make sales. You can see at the bottom of the page here when the settlement period ends. Expect the funds to then take three to five business days to hit your bank account. But how does Amazon determine the net proceeds? Because you may notice if you do a quick calculation of the money coming in minus the money going out, it doesn't quite add up to the net proceeds. So the calculation is net proceeds equals the money coming in, which is everything written in blue here on the right, minus the money going out, which is everything written in red underneath it, minus the account level reserve, plus the beginning balance, which is your account level reserve carried over from the last settlement period. And by the way, each settlement period is two weeks long. Requirements to get paid. So to get paid, you need to have a positive balance, a valid bank account hooked up to your Amazon seller account, a valid credit card on file, and funds eligible to transfer. And by that, I mean you may have a positive balance, but Amazon does withhold funds from you in an account level reserve. But what is the account level reserve? So every seller has one and its purpose is to fulfill any claims or chargebacks and it's based on a delivery date system. So what that means is funds are held from an order for seven days after the latest estimated delivery date. And this is to ensure that your account contains enough funds to fulfill any refund requests from buyers. And other reasons that account level reserves can occur include A to Z guarantee claims, chargebacks, seller performance, and account review. The account level reserve is then carried over to the starting balance of your next statement. So long story short, there's always going to be a little bit of money that Amazon is withholding from you and it just sits in your account and you'll just get it later. Now moving on from the statement view, let's touch on the transaction view. Now this section shows you every single transaction and you can view it by settlement period, past number of days, or custom date range. Now if you look on the right, if the number has a negative, that means that the money is going out. And if there's no negative, that means the money is coming in. You can go ahead and click on the total of an individual order and it will show you the breakdown. So there's the order ID number, transaction date, the product name, the quantity, the Amazon fees, referral fee, sales tax, and at the bottom it shows you change to your seller account balance. Now let's go back to the transaction view because there's a tip that I want to touch on. So Amazon isn't perfect, so it's good to pay attention to what they charge you. For example, I just so happened to notice one day when I was in my inventory dashboard that my estimated FBA fees had changed for a few of my variations. I was getting charged $5 in some sense instead of the $3 in some sense for the FBA fees. So it ended up being a difference of over $2 per order that I was being overcharged. And it all adds up. It really does make a difference. So when you catch these mistakes, you can put all the mischarged orders into a spreadsheet and then forward it over to Seller Central support by email. And if you're not sure how to contact them, I have a super quick two minute video, which I'll link up here. And I walk you through how to contact them through phone or email. But in this case, you would email over your spreadsheet and then they will readjust each order and reimburse you for what you overpaid. Now to view these adjustments, 
In your transaction view, change the transaction type to other and you'll see all the money you were able to recoup. So it's good practice to pay attention to the money that's going in and out of your account. Because even though Amazon is a massively successful company, they still make mistakes. So look over your statements every now and then, get familiar with the transaction view, and don't be afraid to reach out to seller support if anything looks fishy or if you don't understand something. So that's everything that I have for you today. If you have any further questions, feel free to comment them down below. And while you're at it, please give the video a like as it really supports my channel. And don't forget to subscribe for more helpful e-commerce videos like this. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.